I'm sure tonight. We have a great show. You're going to see how coconut shells can be used as an instrument in Cambodian dance. You'll meet a band of feisty monkeys who will amaze you with their acrobatics. And you'll see two of the traditional methods of catching fish in Cambodia. As Tanya mentioned, we perform two kinds of Cambodian dance, folk and classical. Our first dance is a classical dance. Classical dance has been connected to truth.
performance. It comes from a famous Cambodian legend called the Riem Kay, which is Cambodia's version of the epic Indian Ramayana. 
and it's a great story with some really interesting modern day parallels. Before this episode begins, Sita, the princess, has been living in exile in the forest with her son and a wise man, a hermit. And um, she sets out to bathe one morning and leaves her sleeping son, Riamlak, with the hermit. But on her way to the pond, she spots a monkey, and she notices the, how the monkey carries her child, her young with her, wherever she goes. And, and Sita feels guilty about this, and so she goes back to collect her child, which, which she's effectively left in daycare. Now the hermit is in a deep med meditation, and he doesn't notice that Sita comes and, and collects her son. When he comes out of his trance, and he discovers the child missing, he panics, and he fears Sita's anger. So. He takes Riamlak's pillow and he scrapes off some, some remnants of dead skin, some DNA, if you will, and he fashions a new child, an identical clone of Riamlak. Well, imagine Sita's surprise when she comes back from the pond and she discovers her son now has an identical twin. The hermit names this new boy Chuklak. They decide the two boys will study together, and so for the next seven years, they study magic with the hermit. As this episode begins, there sends out his best army general, a mystical, magical monkey named Hatnuman, to investigate the source of this disturbing sound, capture those responsible for it. He also sends along his prize white horse, but he hangs a sign on the neck of the horse that says, anyone who plays with this horse will be executed. Well, eventually Hatnaman and the horse catch up with the two mischievous boys. Riamlak, Chuklak are very curious. They immediately disregard the sign and take turns riding the horse. Hatnaman tries to capture them, but with their seven years of magic, they're just too powerful. They actually capture Hatnaman. They tie him up. They take some resin from a tree and write a sign on his face that says, no one except Hatnaman's master, Prince Rama, will be able to untie the string. So you see Hatnaman sort of struggle against the rope. He eventually goes back defeated in his mission. You'll notice right away that the two boys are played by two girls, Paulina Sre and Sodani Crouch, who are 11 and 12 years old. And this is very typical of Cambodian classical dance. Most of the dance roles, male and female, were for centuries performed by women. It was only about 100 years ago that they began to have men uh, play some of the special roles in Cambodian classical dance. So this is Riemlak Chuplak.
Our city of Lowell is home to the second largest community of Cambodian Americans in the country, second only to Long Beach, California. All of the young people performing here tonight are clearly very proud of their Cambodian culture, but they're also as American as anyone in this room. Many were born here, even those who weren't um, were born in refugee camps and came here when they were very young. And so this next dance um, is an interesting example of a cultural fusion. And it's, it's a bridge really between ancient Khmer society and modern Cambodian American culture. It's called Swap Pole, and that stands for the Monkey Warriors. It's another excerpt from the Riem K, Cambodia's um, Ramayana. Uh, the monkeys that you're about to meet are army soldiers gathering food for food. Celebrating a big win. The monkey dance is, uh, is lively and acrobatic, always performed by boys and young men, who you'll see capture the spirit and the mannerisms of monkey, of monkeys. Now, following the original dance, we've added some new choreography. Um, clearly, the dance is no longer traditional at this point. But um, if you watch carefully, you'll see that they remain throughout it all. Swap hole, the monkeys.
that um, they did a version of that dance a few years ago at the White House. Um, so it's a pretty popular number. Uh, the mere fact that there's so many dancers is here tonight at uh, Amherst College. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you deserve, you can boo me. Hampshire College, I'm sorry, um, is testimony to the, the passion of Cambodian people to keep their culture alive. Now I'm going to get serious. Um, between 
is our last dance, I want to once again thank um, Tanya and the
your dance too. Ms. Pusita Hui, artistic director. Our uh, dancers are good at answering questions, if anyone um, had a question for anybody. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to a couple of master artists who are in residence with us from Phnom Penh. If we can get them to come out, are they coming? <laughs> they won't come out. No? <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Oh, over here. I just have a quick question, though. I'd be curious to know the folk dances that you perform, if these are formalized or stylized from dances that were performed uh, as social dances or community life, or whether they were created mm. in this form. Most of the folk dances that are performed formally on stage were um, created as in the 19th Can I'm Serena Kiko? Oh, Serena, Serena is beautiful. Look at me, that blue box. Ryan. 